Hello everyone, Ogu Emmanuel is my name. If you are new in this channel, you are highly welcome. And a special thanks to all my returning subscribers, to all my viewers. In my today's video titled, Ibophobia, why they are scared of the Ibo people. Do you know why a lot of people from other tribes in Nigeria fear the Igbo people? Do you know? Do you know why many people hate the Igbo for no apparent reason? And some do just without knowing why. Do you know? Then we're going to find out in this revealing, mind-blowing and exciting video about the reason they fear this tribe called Igbo after this intro. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, click like on my Facebook page you know ring the notification bell comment on this video and do not forget to share 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 this video it helps the algorithm let's start what is ibophobia or anti ibo sentiment ibophobia is an overwhelming and debilitating fear of the ibo people this particular kind of phobia is developed when others nurses an exaggerated or unrealistic sense of danger about Igbo people. You know, during the colonial times, during the colonial times, Igbos are seen as this, you know, disproportionately favored ethnic groups with affluence and multi-regionalistic opportunity. They were employed almost everywhere within colonial Nigeria by the colonial authorities in the public sector throughout the country. So these arouse the anger, jealousy, hatred, and the fear of the Igbo amongst the other ethnic groups in Nigeria then. Imagine someone who just came out from war, from fighting, wounded, although, you know, but have already regained his survival instinct and his ability to gather his momentum to fly like the ego. That is one. The second one is um, what I call superiority complex. You know, a lot of other tribes in Nigeria cannot stand this so-called air of superiority. This air of superiority around and about this tribe called Igbo. Some complain that a typical Igbo cannot see the contribution of a non-Igbo as anything valuable. They hate Igbo and fear them because this Igbo man's feeling of being intellectually superior than their neighbors is choking them. They don't want to hear, people don't want to hear about that at all. You know, so the, the Igbo man is a very hardworking person. And he believes that the sacrifice he made yesterday in order to eat today is what made him or what is making him to feel proud and superior of himself. You know, he takes a look at himself and says, ah, Guy, you have done it. You have tried. So there is no crime for anyone who is trying to survive. You know, and... That is exactly what Igbo people are doing. They didn't commit any crime for trying to survive. Not at all. And that is exactly what Igbo man is known for. So that was why he feels he has passed this category of mediocrity in his environment. So the third one is what I call the fear of Igbo domination. Just look at, for example, just look at Nigerian movie industry. It was started and majorly run by the Yorubas in the past. 
So the moment Igbo people gave it a middle touch, the industry became pregnant. It gave birth to what we today called Nollywood, a name that Igbo people turned into billion dollar spinning industry. You know, imagine a name that have garnered a lot of international film and movie festivals, a lot of awards in so many categories all over the world. They drag the world number one positions with the Bollywood, that is the Indian movie industry. You know, so the industry became what it is today because it was ebonized, it was repackaged. It received a lot of touches from the Igbo people. That was why it became what it is today. So this film and entertainment position today has attracted a lot of envy and jealousy because Igbo people apply their God-given talents you know, to the industry. So this supposedly domination by the Igbos in every business or endeavor has brought a lot of jitters down the spine of any of our neighbors or our competitors. So for example, this domination feeling can be seen in this One video. thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibility. Number four, shrewd in business. They say we are shrewd in business. So the level of smartness displayed by a typical Igbo man, both educated and known, has brought confusion into the camp of his business rival. It is so organized that it is difficult to know the next step of their business moves. You can't, there's no way you can read the step of uh, a typical Igbo businessman. You know, they see Igbo businessman as a kind of, the more you look, the less you see. When you are trying to copy him or intimidate him. So, they fear that if you introduce Igbo man in any business, he will use that shrewdness quality to reorganize, repackage, re-engineer, and finally get you out of the way for an onward continuity of the same business. So number fifth one is what I call insecurity. You know, so other people feel insecure with their women around the woman. You know, anytime a woman appears in the picture, in many parts of the world, the natives of those countries used to complain of how the arrival of Igbo people in their midst has made the made the value and the price of their women skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they used to say that ndi bo na me wa yo so that's uh, you know that's they accuse Igbo man of colonizing their women because as soon as Igbo man jumps in their women will just leave their former boyfriends and uh, man friends they will face the Igbo people you know so they see the invasion of uh, invasion or the mission of uh, Igbo, the mission of Igbo people in their communities as one, as a kind of one who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy in their ministry. <laughs> That's the way they perceive an Igbo man. That's the way they see an Igbo man. 
So due to the way a typical Igbo man takes good care of any woman around him, that's what used to bring out this, uh, that's what brought about this envy, this jealousy, and this fear of the Igbo. You know women now, they are very good at identifying with successful people. They can smell cash from a distance, not even a reasonable distance, from a very far distance. You know, I'll keep that for women. <laughs> so, when their women see successful Igbo people and their doggedness, hard work, and the enterprising nature of a typical Igbo man, they will not have any other choice, you know, than to choose the God of this Igbo man that answers their prayers, probably by fire, if you ask me. <laughs> so this, is, for this reason, a lot of jealousy, hatred and fear, you know, in the minds of people from the host communities will begin to manifest. They will begin to look for a way to attack these invaders. They will, they will look for a way to attack these, these Igbo people. They have come again. So, the coming of the Igbos to the communities of these people from other tribes is still seen by their men as a big and intimidating threat. It remains a big threat to them. The sixth one is what I call independent spirit. The Igbo wanted to be themselves, not to depend on anyone for anything or survival. Let me ask you, do you think it is easy for someone to bring himself down for more than seven years or eight years? Go serve Oga or Madam. You just cool down. Bring yourself down. You serve Oga, you serve Madam. So as to be somebody tomorrow. Do you think it's easy? So many people from other tribes, so many youths from other tribes cannot do that. So it's one of the passwords for our success. So the Igbo are very good at showing profitable ways and ideas to his brothers and relatives so that they too can be independent. They can be independent. They love to show their people how to fish instead of only giving them fish to eat. Igbos are very good at that. So many other youth from other tribes in Nigeria cannot have the patience to undergo that type of training. They cannot. They find it very tedious and time consuming. So the Igbos are naturally ambitious, industrious, and not afraid to speak their mind wherever they are. It comes naturally, it flows, it's not something, it, 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 it runs in our DNA. The Igbo people has this spirit of, yes, I can do it. And the ant, they does it. The bad feeling of envy, jealousy and fear is the price an Igbo man pays for, you know, pays for coming from a tribe highly associated with respect for their ingenuity and doggedness. So it is in the DNA of an Igbo man to be confident, not to allow himself to be intimidated by anyone. Other people are scared of the Igbo man for this. The seventh one is they secretly control the economy of Nigeria. It is true. There is no doubt about this. You know, so they are, they are everywhere, running and controlling every kind of business is under the sun. They can be found in, in the remotest part of any village in Nigeria and beyond. There is no scarcity of them. They run and control on almost every type of commerce and services in Nigeria. You know, so you must have to depend on them for your spare parts replacements, for example new used clothing and shoes, chemist shops, restaurants, bread making, electrical parts, electronics, supermarkets, 
building materials, and so on and so forth. Where would I start? I don't know where to start. You know? They are the major importers of almost any goods you can think of in Nigeria. So, what about the transportation sector? Go and check almost all the roads in Nigeria and count the transportation buses that belong to the Igbo people. You cannot be able to count them. You can't. You know? So, they can be found wanting. They are not scared of their competitors because they know their onions. They have spent enough time to master their arts and crafts. So you don't have to blame them for that. You have to give them that. So other business competitors are always at the mercy of Igbo businessmen for survival. You know, so that's why that jealousy, that envy, that fear is targeted at them. It's, target, it's, you know, it's, targeted, it's targeted at Igbos. You know, so... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's why a lot of their competitors, they don't like to see eyeball to eyeball with Igbo people. They see them as enemies. So when somebody once told me, I don't know how true, somebody once told me that it is the Igbos who are in the possession of more than 50% of Nigeria and foreign currencies in the country. But to be frank with you, I don't know how true that was. I just don't know. But I have reasons to believe that it must not be, that it will not be too far from the truth. It will not be too far from the truth. Number eight is fear Igbo women. A lot of their tribesmen are so much afraid to do anything with Igbo women. <laughs> Most people do see I mean, most people from other tribes, they do see Igbo women as a kind of people larger than life. That they, that they don't even look human because of their looks, their courage, their packaging. They say that they are very special and beautiful too. They believe Igbo women are very expensive in our tastes and that they are very, very hard and expensive to maintain. So due to exposure and with this belief that her Igbo brothers have already spoiled them or corrupted them with expensive caring and maintenance culture. You know Igbos, they are very good at taking good care of their women. You know, so some are scared of Igbo women because of the belief that as soon as she enters your family, she would want to dominate everybody to the extent the husband will no longer be taking care of his larger families and siblings. You know? <laughs> so, some families are also scared of mixing Igbo blood with theirs because of their future political advantages or ambition. Some do have this slogan of fear Igbo women or 